Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. This time last week I was talking about the likelihood of colder air pushing southwards through the Christmas period. That did not happen to the extent that many of the computer model runs were suggesting. There was some snow around in the northern half of the UK, but for most of the country it was a green Christmas day. This week it's all change and the emphasis is on the likely likelihood of mild conditions. I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The sequence runs from 18 GMT Tuesday the 28th. At the outset it's a mobile picture, areas of low pressure and weather fronts pushing eastwards. So there will be more wet and windy conditions in the short term across all parts of the UK. But as we go through Thursday and into New Year's Eve on Friday, high pressure increasingly builds from the south, so the focus of the rain becomes uh, the north and the west, drier conditions in much of southern and central Britain. Also, with winds going into a southwesterly direction and travelling from a long way up from the air, yeah, coming up from the subtropics by this point, temperatures really will be rising significantly. I'll look at those in a moment. Into the new year itself, not a great deal changes to begin with, but then there is more of a westerly flow or even perhaps a northwesterly flow for a time on this sequence. So temperatures should be dropping from those extremely high levels for the time of the year. All in all, it remains quite changeable though. Further spells of uh, rain, high pressure may be still having more influence at times in the southern half of the UK, so the wettest conditions remaining in the north. And with temperatures there dipping towards the end, there could be a little bit of sleet or snow again over high ground in Scotland. Just to try and put a little bit of context on that sequence, I'll show some jet stream and air mass temperature charts. This one, jet stream for Wednesday the 29th, you can see, it's heading towards the north of the UK and the reds here, the red shading, the yellow shading indicates that it's a strong jet stream. Looking at the upper air temperature profile at this point, it's mild really across most of the UK, the yellows and oranges there, the air over Scotland still somewhat cooler. Jumping forwards to New Year's Eve, by this point the jet's really to the west and the north of the UK still tracking across Scotland there to an extent. But we are pulling up some very, very mild air, as I said, uh, all the way from, from the Azores. And those temperatures are going to be well above the average. It's just a question of, of whether or not the record is broken. Currently, for New Year's Eve, it's 14.8 Celsius. Then, going forwards to Monday the 3rd of January, it's quite a big change, at least temporarily, and according to this particular computer model run, jet stream sinking southwards, the UK is finally on its colder northern side. So you can see on this one the uh, blues now sinking down across the UK with the yellows and oranges a lot further south. So we've got a colder air mass making its way down across the country. Not particularly cold, I think it should be emphasised, but quite a lot colder than in the days which precede it. So how does all that reflect down to the surface and the temperatures that we can expect? Here we are at 15 GMT Wednesday the 29th. Very mild really across England, Wales, Northern Ireland. 13s, 14s, close to record breaking. Still colder there over the northern half of Scotland. New Year's Eve, as I've already mentioned, this certainly has the potential to be a record breaker. 14s on this chart from the GFS being shown quite widely over, over England. Often it can undershoot temperatures even at this time of year by 1 Celsius or so. Therefore 15 degrees Celsius is a very realistic possibility and that would be the 14.8 which as I mentioned is the current record. Going forwards to Monday the 3rd, that's when we've got that colder air making its way southwards, temperatures back down into single figures, chilly I think perhaps in the north you would describe it as maybe two, three, fours, remember say, remember that you can add a degree onto these probably over most of the UK, 
Then as we go down into southern Britain, sevens, eights, nines, so perhaps 10 Celsius even in the south there, close to the average, still actually a little bit above it for the early part of January. Another way of looking at the temperature outlook is to use the uh, MoGreps plot. This one is for London. Um, each of the individual lines represents one of the runs in the ensemble. Very closely packed together through the first days. We can see here on the 29th, it looks like 14, 15 Celsius is possible. And then on New Year's Eve, there, the 31st of December, this is showing about 13 or 14 Celsius. As I say, it's going to be very, very close for record, and that may well fall. There is a signal, if you look further forwards into the early part of January, for a bigger spread there to develop between the individual runs, and a downward trend shows its hand. But at the moment, it really is a dip back down to the, towards the average, not really pointing towards cold conditions at this stage. Because we've got this mobile flow coming in off the Atlantic and high pressure building from the south beginning to squeeze things, it will be windy at times. Uh, this again is MoGreps chart for London, showing forecast wind gusts. You can see here on Sundays, 40 miles an hour, they're being quite widely supported by the runs in the ensemble. And that potential for windy conditions really continues there. The spread at enlargens, enlargens as we go further forwards. But still, as I say, it could be windy on New Year's Eve here. There's, there's quite a wide range of possible outcomes. It's something to keep an eye on. Rainfall. With the Atlantic-driven pattern and high pressure building up from the south, as I've already mentioned, the focus of the wet weather becomes the north and the west, and that's shown on these two charts. For one on the left is days 0 to 5, for one on the right days 0 to 10. Both are displaying accumulated precipitation according to the GFS model. So we can see their values of 30 millimetres in the northwest, 40 millimetres in places during days 0 to 5. It's drier as you head eastwards and southwards. The same general pattern is shown on the right-hand side chart, days 0 to 10, but now the totals have increased very wet potentially in the west of Scotland, maybe western Wales too, much drier in the south and the east. As ever, remember these charts are just a snapshot from one model run, but I think they're quite representative of the general pattern which is being favoured. So, do the other deterministic model runs show a similar pattern towards the end of the first week? Just to recap, here's the GFS. Uh, Tuesday the 4th of January, we've got this colder air moving down from the northwest, a ridge of high pressure building across the UK. At the same time, the Canadian model has something similar. The high pressure is a little bit further southwest. The northerly plunge on this uh, sequence on this run is sharper, but very similar really. The German ICOM model, which has been performing extremely well recently, has high pressure to the southwest, low pressure tracking across the UK, and then as that would pull away, we would see colder air moving down from the north on this one too, at least for a time. So there are differences there, but broadly speaking, it's a similar evolution. Onto the European ECM model, this is very similar to ICON, often the case in my experience, high pressure to the southwest, low pressure pulling away eastwards, colder air following it down. Finally, the UK Met Office Global model, probably the coldest of all of them this morning on, the, on these updates. You can see quite a sharp northerly flow moving down across all parts of the UK. The dark blue shading is cold upper level air. Once again, the, the pattern's similar, high pressure to the west, but it's maybe suggesting a longer, colder spell. I think it would, in the days which followed, much of the country would experience a continuation of below average temperatures. The caveat here is that I've had a look at the Met Office MoGreps ensemble and charts this morning, and this operational run was very much at the cold end of the ensemble, so I don't really think there's much support in the UK Met Office ensemble for this scenario, at least at the present time. But anyway, taking all of those deterministic model runs together, the outlook I would suggest at the end of the first week 
is for somewhat colder conditions. We'll be pulling in uh, more of a north or a northwesterly flow, at least for a time. Temperatures in the south may well still be quite close to the seasonal average, but in the north, the, uh, they probably will be dipping below and that leads to an increased risk of sleet or snow, particularly over high ground. But all in all, it looks like a transient colder snap, as I say, and really just focused on the north of the United Kingdom. So what about the second week of the forecast period? Just to remind everyone that, as usual, it's all about trends and probabilities rather than specifics at this range. And as last week's update showed, even those can quickly change. Anyway, to begin with, here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London and Southern England. Across the top, it shows upper air temperatures, and the message here is that the thick purple line, the ensemble mean, is staying above the thick black line for most of the period. That's the 30-year average. So most of the runs, I think, are supporting that ensemble mean. Most of them are staying milder than the norm. There, are a, there is a small cluster of runs which are bringing in much colder air for fairly lengthy times, periods of time. But as I say, that those at the moment are perhaps 15 to 25% of the total. So the chance of it happening is low. Rainfall and snowfall across the bottom. Some spikes continue to appear there. It doesn't look particularly wet. It would suggest that high pressure will be building from the south at times. Uh, the snow row, maximum value it can take is 33. Well, it doesn't go above four through that second week, so it's suggesting a very, very small chance of snow falling, at least in the south. Going up to Glasgow to take a look at the picture in the northwest, across the top, Upper air temperatures are fluctuating. The uh, purple line is sometimes slightly above the thick black line, sometimes slightly below it. So there is, a, there is more of a signal here for temperatures at the upper air level to be lower relative to the average than in the south. But it's not particularly cold. It's just, as I say, it's dipping, so there will be colder and milder days there mixed in. There are more rain spikes across the bottom than there were on the London plot, so it's a wetter picture. The snow row reaches a maximum of eight, so eight out of the, to the highest possible total of 33. So just around about 25% maximum chance of snow falling on any one day. All in all, I would suggest it's a fairly typical pitch from the northwest, and taking those two charts together, it's a fairly typical pitch across the UK with the coldest conditions in the north, the mildest in the south, the wettest in the north, the driest in the south. So high pressure is likely to be uh, to centred to the south of the UK, perhaps over continental Europe or stretching down to the Azores, with areas of low pressure close to Iceland and maybe some colder polar, polar maritime air being pulled down as they move away eastwards, northeastwards. Very typical, really, for the time of the year. Taking a look at the two-metre temperature data table for southern England. The light greens dominate throughout the second week. Those are runs which are going for maximums of between 6 and 10 Celsius. Fairly mild to summarise. Going up to Glasgow, here the dark greens are the dominant uh, theme. Those are runs going for between 1 and 5 Celsius. There's also a little bit of blue. Those are the really cold runs between 0 Celsius to minus 8. A fairly typical picture here, close to the average, colder than in the south, as I've already said, and relative to the norm here, there will be some rather cold days, I would expect. The uh, data table showing surface pressure for York is quite, quite interesting this week. To begin with, the yellows and oranges are dominant. Those are really the runs which are going for higher than average pressure at this time of year. It's around 1,011 millibars, and the yellows are 1,011 to 1,025. The oranges are higher again. But as we go through the second week, the amount of oranges and yellows does decrease. The greens, blues, and purples start to show more frequently. So perhaps later on, the signal is for pressure to be falling. 
rather a sort of mixed picture, I would suggest, as well from this. The postage stamps give an idea of what sort of pressure patterns we can expect across the North Atlantic. This chart is for the 9th of January, and if you look at the individual stamps, what you can see on most of them is there is orange and yellow shading to the south of the UK, blue and purple to the north. That indicates a positive North Atlantic oscillation pattern, which is one where pressure is lower over Iceland than over the Azores. It is the default, and for the UK, it typically means average or above average temperatures, at least for most of the time. I think it's just worth also pointing out that some of the uh, stamps here have a colder scenario developing. It's perhaps 15 to 25% of them at the moment, which would lead to a colder spell. So a minority, but something perhaps worth keeping an eye on in the coming days. The ensemble mean also gives an indication of the expected pressure patterns. This is generated using the GEFS and it's valid on Friday, January the 7th. High pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, uh, an Atlantic flow covering the UK. The European ensemble at the same time, very similar. A westerly flow, positive North Atlantic oscillation once more there, high pressure really focused on the Azores, ridging northeastwards, perhaps towards the UK, low pressure close to Iceland. Not what you want to see if you're hoping for snow, particularly in the southern half of the UK. So to summarise the next two weeks, week one. It's an unsettled start in all regions, but wet weather increasingly becomes focused on the north and west as high pressure builds up from the south. It turns exceptionally mild and records are possible. For example, the target for New Year's Eve is 14.8 Celsius and computer models are suggesting that 15 or even 16 Celsius is not out of the question. Towards the end of the week, we begin to lose the southwesterly flow. Winds go into more of a west or northwesterly direction. Therefore, it turns colder in all regions, but particularly the north. And over high ground in the north, there could be a risk of sleet or snow. Week two, changeable wettest in the north and driest in the south. After that chilly start in the north, temperatures will probably fluctuate around the average and colder days remain more likely in the north than in the south. There is perhaps a 15 to 25% chance of a colder period developing with high pressure building further northwards, perhaps towards Greenland or Scandinavia, but that at the moment is just something to keep an eye on. It is not the favoured scenario. There's strong support for an Atlantic dominated picture to continue as we head through that second week. Well, that's about it for today. It's a very different summary from the one which I gave last week. Whether or not it will turn out to be more accurate, I'll leave as an open question. Often though in the UK, when computer models predict a milder pattern, they are correct. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I do hope you found it useful and enjoyable. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. And can I wish all of you who've been watching these videos through 2021 all the very best for the new year. And as ever, of course, I hope that you all get the weather that you want. Thanks now. Bye.